Slap Fight Championship has returned to the city where it all began, Branson, Missouri, the birthplace of American slapping. Tonight, 12 competitors from across the country have made their way to the Ozark Mountains to test themselves during our 29th slap fighting event, Boiling Point. Tonight's card is a smorgasbord of slapping featuring a talented group of veterans eager to showcase their tenacity and test their resilience at the world famous slap fight barrel. Hello fight fans, my name is JT Tilly and I'll be joined in the broadcast booth tonight by former UFC heavyweight champion Mark the Hammer Coleman. But first, let's take a look at the card. Leading off tonight's main card will be a lightweight elimination battle between Grove, Oklahoma's Outlaw and the Slap Savage from Atlanta, Georgia. These two heavy-handed lightweights started their careers at a deficit and have come to boiling point with something to prove. Each has every intention of using the other as a stepping stone toward the title. Next, we feature Moline, Illinois' Berserker, a slapper that many feel could be the future of the light heavyweight division. His opponent will be the executioner of flamboyant character and fan favorite from Mexico City, Mexico. Rising star Black Larry returns to face his toughest opponent yet, slap fight challenger series standout, Wild Man from Fulton, Missouri. In a featured heavyweight match, Kansas-based slapper Demon returns to face Bubbles, a massive heavyweight from Texas with an undefeated record and a very heavy slap. One of the more anticipated matches on tonight's card, veteran slapper Slap Daddy has joined the Slap Fight family and will make his debut tonight against grizzled lightweight veteran The Cannon. And in tonight's main event, the top light heavyweight at Slap Fight Championship, Okuma915, the undisputed champion, faces his arch rival, the Slim Reaper, in a light heavyweight championship battle to prove which of these two alpha males will walk away with bragging rights and the Slap Fight Championship. It's all going down tonight, kids. It's Slap Fight Championship 29, Boiling Point. This just in, the executioner will not be competing tonight at boiling point. Due to an unforeseen circumstance, we will be replacing the executioner with 12 Gauge, a military veteran from El Paso, Texas, and new member of Team Okuma. Illinois native Berserker has had a bit of a tough start with Slap Fight Championship. In his first appearance at the barrel, he absolutely destroyed Magni, earning knockout of the night and putting the heavyweight division on blast. But after his next two heavyweight opponents withdrew from their fights, Berserker made the choice to drop to light heavyweight, where he intends on making a title run. My name is Dallin Getling, and welcome to Slap Fight Boiling Points. Tonight, we have a group of grown men that are just waiting to slap each other upside the face. The good news is, it's slap time. It's fight time. It's slap fight time! Are you ready for the slap time? All right. Well, let's bring on our first slapper. He weighed in at 210 pounds. He hails from El Paso, Texas. He is 12 Gauge. Yeah. His opponent is fighting out of Moline, Illinois. He weighed in at 223 pounds. He is Berserker. <laughs> and your lead official, Kyron Bowen. 
Ship 29 Boiling Point. My name is J.T. Tilly, and I'm here with former UFC heavyweight champion and Hall of Famer, Pride champion, Marky Mark, America's sweetheart, Mark the Hammer Coleman. And Mark, I'm ready for these five fights this evening. How about you, brother? Yes, I've, I've been excited about tonight for a long time. A great matchup to start tonight here. The young guy. Uh, versus the veteran. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, me too. We're going to have a, a quick coin toss here, but first, lead official Kyron Bowen is going to give a quick rules meeting to the fighters, and then we'll get this 10 round scheduled fight underway. And Mark, I got to say, I, I saw you talking to 12 Gauge. Uh, 12 Gauge actually just took this fight last night. We had a little bit of a scheduling issue with the executioner. And so 12 Gauge, part of Team Okuma, steps up at the 11th hour uh, to become the lead off opponent for Berserker here at Boiling Point. And it's almost like they called each other in advance and said, hey man, uh, wear your Nikes, man. We're gonna be on TV. Yes, he's uh, time to eat. It's what he, like, what he says, it's time to eat. He's representing the military. A um, lot of power in this young man. Now you can see right away here, he's coached by Okuma and he already tried a crafty little veteran move to stand far mm -hmm. from the barrel. Uh, Berserker went ahead and busted him on it. And here we go, this is round one. Shot from Berserker, and both Okuma and 12 Gauge are on their ass. I tell you what, he was leaning in a little bit. I noticed that. Yeah, sometimes you got to be careful. Some of these new guys, they they want to present their chin. They want to they want to be brave, and and uh, you know you as you know, Mark, from your uh, your reputation as a master striker, uh, you can't stick the chin over the knees in any art form. Okay, he almost fell down taking a drink of water there. It looks like he's still feeling that slap. Now you can't tuck your chin at Slap Fight Championship. It's got to, the referee and the officials have to be able to stick their hand in between your chin and your chest. Uh, but you don't have to stick it over the barrel and that may be a lesson learned there. Inexperience. But he, he's up. He showed his, he showed a lot of strength to me in the chin. In, indeed. Now this gentleman is 20 years old. He's the second youngest competitor on the Slap Fight roster. Second only to Black Larry who's 19. And this is gonna be his first slap thrown in competition. Here we go. He's almost got a vertical hand here. One, You're gonna to wanna to watch that. Two, three. And a big karate chop to the neck. And again, that's, uh, Berserker's laughing at him now. You can't karate chop the karate here. That's just one of those things. It's just learning curves. I was talking to him, told him to be accuracy is most important. Yeah, definitely. A lot of these guys, they come in with full power, and, and sometimes you've got to dial back your power. Now, Berserker, Berserker's already got one big knockout over Magny on his record, and you were there. We had that uh, that knockout in Oklahoma on April 20th. He knocked out a, a heavyweight fighter. This is his first fight at super heavyweight. Very intense before this fight. Berserker. Yeah, there's big, big energy in this fight for sure. How's his stance there, JT? A little wide. Uh, he's got Frank Why? attack in his corner, so that's probably something he's yeah. working on. And that was a solid shot by Berserker. Wow. Wow. Yes, way to, way to recover. Good job by the, the catch man not touching him. Yeah, that's no, right. No duck down. No Okuda 915, he's building a nice little team in El Paso, Texas. 12, uh, 12 Gauge is the newest member of that team. Now you'll notice that Okuma tried not to touch 12 Gauge. Um, that's because when your corner man assists you in any way at Slap Fight Championship, it counts as a takedown, so, or excuse me, as a knockdown. And uh, three knockdowns results in a TKO. So uh, Gage is a little bit visibly rocked here, lovingly just kind of stroking the barrel there. You gotta take your time, recover, but it, if it goes to a decision, you gotta show strength. He's gotta step right back up when he when he is ready. Step up and let's go. In the corner of Berserker, legendary slapper, people's champion, and current slap fight heavyweight champion, Frank the Tank, and of course, current light heavyweight champion, Okuma915, and the other. And another karate chop to the carotid. Uh, that one looked like it hurt Berserker's feelings. We're gonna have a penalty here, and of course, uh, that's uh, your first violation is a warning, and your second violation results in the loss of a turn. So we have officially lost a turn here, and that means the Berserker is now going to have two shots in a row. And I can tell you, Mark, the hand in the pocket gives away just a little bit of the mindset of 12-gauge. Mm -hmm. 
What's he doing down in there? Mark, don't be inappropriate. Okay, he's going to step back up to the barrel here. This is a tough one, knowing that you're going to take two shots from a 225.9 pound slapper. I warned him about this what? foul. Oh, this isn't good. Look at his chin. It's almost like he heard me. You are a okay, veteran, JT. Line of <laughs> you're eight years older than me, Mark. Yes, I know. Uh, line official Q Davidson is having a conversation with the with the slappers here, and it looks like it's a a conversation about foot placement. He's leaning that chin out there, JT. You know, you'd think that Okuma would say something to him yeah. here. One. Important position. Two. Three. Oh, that was a wow. hell of a slap. Wow. And he stays on his feet. Yes, sir. Look at the intensity on the face yeah. of Berserker. Oh, my gosh. The last time we saw Berserker, he was just a fresh-faced pizza maker. He had no beard. He hadn't been training. Uh, when he showed up at the weigh-ins last night, this guy is ripped. He's lost a lot of weight. And uh, suddenly he's got this, uh, he's got this Uncle Willie beard. Looks like a slapper now. Oh, my gosh. Look at the chair. Oh, and that was a little sloppy. Okay, a little bit of a scolding here from Lita Fisher. Gonna have a tough time eating mashed potatoes tonight. <laughs> okay, now he made it through those two yes, shots. Sir. Youth. He's got 60 seconds here to regain his composure. Uh, let's hope that he takes each each and every minute. Let's hope not. Now Berserker Berserker dropped to uh, heavyweight from heavyweight to light heavyweight, and uh, he wants to make a run at Okuma, the light heavyweight champion. So a win over Okuma's uh, student would probably be good, a nice feather in his cap. He looks real good. These guys are coming in lean and mean. They're taking it seriously because it is a great sport on the rise. And, and, and they're all trying to become champions, become superstars. And, yeah, that's uh, an interesting thing you, that you bring up. When we first began with Slap Fight Championship back in 2015, 16, there weren't a lot of slappers. There was a lot of guys I had to pitch the, the concept to, and, and a lot of guys that just didn't really believe in it. But now we're two or three generations deep, and there's guys that have been training at home One, before they ever come to us. Two, three. Okay, now that was the first great slap. Holy smokes. 12 gauge with some big power, finds his mark. And Berserker's already recovered, but it didn't hurt him. He's very effective. Very respectful, Berserker. Get warm. Okay, Berserk is going to take a little walk here. Drink of water in a conversation with Frank. Try wise to take the walk. But you always got to be impressing the judges. That's right. It's very important in slap fighting to watch the way you appear to the judges. With so many penalties, so many warnings and violations, your mindset's important, but so is the visual. And here we go, Berserker's back to the barrel. Gonna get a little bit of a, a, a scolding from lead official Kyron Bowen. And you can kinda see on the face of 12 gauge, he's starting to take some damage here. One, two, Oh my gosh, and he goes down, and again, Okuma 915, ass to the concrete. Good save by Okuma, had to touch him. Or the head would have hit, we don't need that. Okay, now that was a solid shot. Okuma's gonna have to have a conversation with his fighter here about priorities. Berserker has blood in the water, and that's a win for Berserker. That brings him to two wins and zero losses. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner. Berserker. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Berserker! Stay here, brother. I'm not no ring girl, so I'm not gonna kiss you and put that around your neck, but it's for you, brother. Good job. So I gotta ask you, I, I, I like to find out how people get into this. How did you get into this sport? I got some friends, they've been seeing the slap fighting and uh I had a couple of them contact me. It's like, man, this is you. you be in there. So is that just because of your personality, or are you just known to be a tough guy? You got a, a, some background in martial arts, or what's 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 the story there? I'm tough, definitely you, tough. 
Well, I think we saw that tonight for sure. And, uh, and then, so how'd you find out? How'd you actually get in here? Uh, Google, I got on the internet and contacted them. They contacted me. That's the answer to everything, Google. All right, great job, Berserker. We look forward to seeing you some more. Right Let's hear from Berserker! <laughs>the main event for an exclusive look at the first quarter final of the car jitsu invitational 10 grapplers from all walks of life will face each other in a single night double elimination jiu-jitsu tournament inside of a 2005 toyota scion no striking is allowed but anything inside the car can be used to submit your opponent it's like nothing you've seen before. Stick around for a test drive of Car Jitsu Championship immediately following the main event tonight. The heavyweight matchup between Bubbles and Demon has been canceled. These two have been removed from the car due to unforeseen circumstances, and so we will move right along to our featured fight with Black Larry and Wild Man. Slap Fight Challenger Series 1 featured 12 hand-selected competitors vying for an opportunity to join the Slap Fight family. Perhaps the most dominant of those 12 competitors was Fulton, Missouri's Wild Man, a single father and adrenaline junkie who walked away from the series with a 2-0 record. His dominant wins over the mask to Mojito earned him a contract with the promotion, but a win over Black Larry tonight could cement him as the next in line for Slap Fight Gold. Another standout from Slap Fight Challenger Series 1, Black Larry lambasted the concrete finisher in one of the most lopsided contests of the year. Black Larry shocked Slap Fight promoters with his performance and earned a contract, becoming the youngest competitor in the promotion. He suffered a setback last month at Turf Wars, but hopes to get back on track with a victory over the wild man. First, introducing, he's fighting out of Branson, Missouri, weighed in at 166 pounds. Please give it up for Black Larry. Yeah. Yeah. And his opponent, please give a warm welcome for Wildman.
Gary on the left side of your screen. Not sure why I felt like I should have mentioned that. And of course, uh, we have uh, White Wildman on the right. And Mark, uh, who do you pick in this matchup? Mm, it's hard to tell. Um, Black Larry Young. But uh, I, I guess I'll go out and let him take Black Larry Young. And now, Black Larry is here uh, from long here. Long athletic. <laughs> He's from here in Missouri. And uh, of course, Wildman also from Missouri. Fulton, Missouri, the home of the legendary Frank the Tank. And you'll see that he's got Biscuit in his corner. Biscuit was a last-minute replacement on the card, uh, but since uh, we didn't have an opportunity for him, he'll be cornering. Tails it is! Biscuit needs it. Yeah. And it looks like Black Biscuit Larry... Biscuit needs to uncross his hand. He does. Black Larry has lost the coin toss. Yeah. He's going to take the first slap. He's chosen to be barefoot tonight. Uh, Black Larry is a mixed martial arts competitor, and he likes to be barefoot on the mat. He thinks it helps him. Just stay grounded. Now you can see Larry does not have his chin tucked. Yes. One, and here we go, round two, one. Three. Larry takes a big shot and eats it, yes, stares sir. him down. Yes. And we've got a stepping violation by Wildman. Now that's heartbreaking for Wildman. I can tell you, Mark, I had a conversation with him this morning and he's been working on his, his stepping. So this is probably heartbreaking. Now Black Larry did take a hard shot here. So let's see if he can shake that off and return fire in the bottom of round one. So here we go. One, two, three! Oh, and a slap to the eye. That was a little bit of an ugly slap there. I think they're gonna call a clubbing, clubbing violation, yes. We've got a clubbing violation here, and I think what happened was it just fingertips to the eye. Not a lot of damage, but uh, it's not something we're looking for here. We're looking for slapping. He took it strong. Accuracy. Very, very important. To loosen up. All right, Kyron Bowen's giving them both a little talk. and said, keep it clean. These are two new fighters. Uh, Black Larry won a contract during the Slap Fight Challenger Series Season 1, uh, where he defeated Concrete Finisher by knockout. Wild men earned a contract by winning two fights in season one, both one, against the Masked Mojito. Two, Round two. Three. Okay, that looked a little ugly there. We've got another high. club, this time from Wild Man. Two young fighters, the youngest fighter in the league now, Black Larry, 19 years old. Wild man, single father, One, great guy, about to get slapped. Two, three. Oh, and a nice yeah. big paw print in the side of the face. Still a little high, but it looks like they're going to let that stand. Good slap. Good, solid, clean slap, I think. We'll see. Wild man and Biscuit have been working together in Fulton, Missouri. Biscuit's uh, innovator of a new technique, and uh, Wild man's using a little bit of it today. Now, Biscuit has retired from slapping, uh, I believe, three times, and uh, he's now currently uh, in the process of trying to unretire a fourth time. So I'm sure you'll see Biscuit behind the barrel again as soon as we say yes. Round three. One, two, three. Oh, and Larry stumbles. And he eats it. Looks like Larry's okay. And here we are, bottom of round three. Eats it, steps right up to the play. I love it. All right, Wildman is a retired mixed martial artist. Larry is training for his first amateur One, fight. One, two, three. Oh, now that was a nice shot. Larry has found his mark, but Wildman eats it. He now has 60 seconds to return to the barrel. Now, what's going on here, Mark? I, I didn't see. Well, what's going on? Something with the tape. The competitors at Slap Fight Championship wear tape around their slap wrist. Uh, that tape is not to protect the wrist. It's actually so that the judges and officials can see how deep the heel of the hand extends into the jawline. If the heel of the hand goes any deeper than the tip of the chin, that's clubbing. Uh, we're trying to protect the brains of our competitors the best we can while still slapping the shit out of each other. Round four. One, two, three. 
Oh, and Black Larry eats another one, stares Wild Man down. All right, these guys are banging, Mark. Now, Mark, could you ever stand at the barrel like that with your hands behind your back and let me slap the piss out of you? And if so, what would it cost me? You? I do it for free, but you got to take one back, bro, because you ain't ever putting me down. Here's the problem, Mark. I can hear you saying it, but I can't see you backing it up, man. Zip it, pal. I'll do a spin move. Just and zip it, it and let's go. Here we go. Two. Now four, then Mark goes to sleep. Three. Oh, and Just a little like bit that. high. I don't know. They're going to call that. And Black Larry, he's either supporting the movement or Black Larry just got another clubbing violation. And yes, Larry's about to lose a turn and Wild Man, has, in my mind, has just pulled ahead in the judges' scorecards. Big opening here. So yes, he you takes do. takes advantage of it. You certainly do. <laughs> Black Larry's very popular. A lot of the fans talking about Black Larry. Uh, he recently dropped a fight to Outlaw, and it was a devastating loss. He's one and one, and uh, really wanting to make a run at the lightweight title. So we'll see what happens here tonight. This will be a big indicator of his future. Oh, that's a tough shot, but Larry's right back in it. Holy smokes. Now, Wildman looks almost confused as to why Larry won't go down, and it's probably just because you're not hitting him hard enough. Round six. One, two, three. Oh, man. I tell you what, Wildman is chopping him down, but again, Again, supporting the movement with another penalty. So what that's going to do now, that's probably going to eat up that second uh, shot in a row for Wild Man, and we're going to go right back to the rotation here. This is a tricky one here. In the corner of Black Larry, you've got mixed martial artist Isaac Spencer. They train together, so there's a little bit of an advantage here. Spencer just happens to work for Sport Slap USA, our sanctioning body. You know, Larry looks pretty clear-eyed here. He's, he's losing the striking match at this point, uh, but it does look like he's still in it. Wild man trying to choke himself. He's had enough. Oh. One. Look at the extension here. Oh, now that was a great one. That was a great shot. Wild Man's got a chin, Mark. Wild Man's always had a chin. We'll see. Uh, he, he needs uh, two in a row here. We'll see if he can take two in a row. Now, Wild Man's never been knocked down. Uh, he's never been knocked out. And uh, he, he is a competitor, but it does look like he's a little bit tentative tonight. again. Yeah, you're going to have to call that when Larry's having a tough night. Yeah, wild man has he takes them all. He really does. I, I got to say, wild Don't man, complain. he's built for slapping. You know, this is a lightweight slapper. He's about 160 some pounds. Just a little short, stocky guy. He's got good leverage. He's got good mobility. Nothing fancy. But, uh, you know, Black Larry has a, a level of athleticism where just about anything can happen at any time. I always think size matters, but uh, this guy here is uh, proving it can be done. Mm -hmm. Agreed. A lot of these guys cutting very hard, JT. You know, I, there were quite a few guys. We have a gentleman on the card uh, later tonight, Slap Daddy. Uh, great guy. Uh, he just recently cut down from over 200 pounds all the way to lightweight for his fight tonight. These guys are taking the sport a lot more seriously now, Mark. All these guys are getting very serious. And, and it's a professional sport trying to be superstars. Two, three. Oh, and that was a big shot. And again, Black Larry stays at the barrel. He was visibly staggered. By the way, fans, Brinks is the official free-to-play partner of Pro League Network. Go to Brinks.tv now to watch along with tonight's broadcast and bet for free. That's B-R-I-N-X dot TV. Check it out. One, two, three. 
Oh, that was a good shot, but Larry eats it. What a long fight we got going here. This is turning into something special, JT. Yeah, we're going all the way to the end of the 10 rounds here, and at this point, Larry's going to need something dramatic, I would think, to win the decision. Wildman's looking solid, Mark. He's actually, uh, with a win tonight, he would move very close to being in the conversation for the next lightweight championship opportunity against Raven. This is round nine. One, two, three. Oh, that was a nice shot. But again, the chin is holding up. He's got the chin to win, as they say. And now we're in the top of round 10. Lead official Kyron Bowen, sponsored by Sangamon Watches. Always taking an extra chance to take a look at his uh, bling on camera. One, Dig deep, round two, 10, let's go. Last slap. Oh, nice. Mm, Larry's eating these slaps. Look at him stare him down. A I couple love of Larry. I do too, man. It's just a couple of those rounds at the beginning of the match. Yep. Really going to affect him on the judges' scorecards. At this point, I would think that Larry has one opportunity here. This is round 10, last slap of the match. It would, would seem like he's behind. Let's see what he can pull off here. Here's one, your wind up. Two, three. And a great slap, but I don't Kevin know if it's going to be enough. I personally would get that round 10. I, I, the adrenaline. I might be susceptible to club a little bit on that round you 10. You think so? Yeah, so. I think honestly, man, if it was round 10 and I was against either one of these guys, I think with me personally, I would probably just do some sort of a spinning move and then yeah. just disappear and, and maybe gotta, astral yeah. project. Especially if you feel like you're behind. The judges are deliberating. It's taking a little longer than I would have thought. Uh, to me, this seems like a, a very clear win All for right, Wild friends, Man. All right, friends, we do have in. a decision. It was a split decision. Oh, wow. Your winner, Wild Man. And there you have it. Wild Man moves to three wins and no losses. Let's listen into the post-fight interview. Man, here you go. Congratulations. Look good out there. That was quite a battle. Tell me, how confident were you coming into this fight? I was about 50-50, you know. Either way, it's 50-50. I got the upper hand of this 50-50. That's right. He's not He's not a glass half full, glass half empty. He's a glass is 50-50 guy. So very good. It worked for you tonight. Great job. I look forward to seeing you in the future. All right. Let's hear it for Wild Man.
Atlanta Georgia's Slap Savage made his promotional debut during Slap Fight 25 this past April in Oklahoma City. He faced top contender The Cannon in a 10-round firefight, which resulted in the Slap Savage dropping to 0-2. After an extensive training camp, the Slap Savage has returned to Slap Fight in hopes to walk away with his first victory at the barrel. Oklahoma-based martial artist Outlaw is returning to the barrel after earning his first victory at Turf Wars. Outlaw shocked the fans with a dominant victory over Challenger Series standout Black Larry. With a new momentum, the Oklahoma Slugger is hoping to string together enough victories to earn the next lightweight title shot. This first guy, he is the one, the only, the Slap Daddy! Yes. <laughs> slap Savage. Slap Savage. Oh, s slap Savage. Sorry, Slap Savage. <laughs> All right, now let's bring out his, his opponent, the Outlaw! Yeah. We got Slap Savage from Atlanta, Georgia, we got Outlaw from Grove, Oklahoma. You boys ready? Let's do it. All right, folks, let's take a look at the rules of Slab Fight. First off, no clubbing. The heel of the hand may make contact, but cannot extend past the chin. Next, no stepping. Feet must be planted shoulder width apart, and there can be no pivoting or stepping when striking. And finally, no flinching. Small reactions are allowed, but any movement that affects the power of the strike is a foul. And here we are back at the barrel. Hello, folks. JT Tilly here with Mark the Hammer Coleman, and we are here with our third fight, Slap Savage versus Outlaw. Well, appearance is uh, important, so I'm not excited about this outfit here. Jeans. <laughs> Be a professional, bro. You don't like the jeans, Mark? Um, well, I like them, but not, not a slap fight, professional yeah. slap fight league. There's just a little bit of his slap swag, ah, slap I swagger guess. there. Uh, it's surpri I'm surprised that you're not uh, commenting on the outlaw. Looks like he just robbed the stagecoach at Silver Dollar City. Okay, another barefoot slapper here. This is a martial artist, Mark. I was talking to him earlier. He's into some Chinese boxing, and he's going to try some new footwork here. If you notice, he's going to pigeon toe himself. Mm. Dig in. Let's see how this works. Round one. Here's your wind up. One, two, three. Okay, and he staggers, slaps Savage, but that was a little bit of a flinch going on yeah, here. He was definitely anticipating that. <laughs> Now, Slap Savage did have some issues in his debut. He fought the Cannon uh, back at Slap Fight 25, which was on 420 weekend at the Cannabis Festival in Oklahoma City. And, Mark, you were there, if you can remember. Well. All right, now, uh, during that card, we saw the Outlaw debut against Runt, and uh, he lost by knockout, and then we watched the Slap Savage lose a decision to Cannon. Both of these guys have been training extensively, and they're here tonight. Oh! to make a run at the lightweight Two, strap. Three. Oh my gosh, Slap Savage with some big, big power. Big power. He ate that nice look. look oh, like and he's been popped. Mm. Something tells me not the first time, but Slap Savage <laughs> has been popped. That's inappropriate to laugh at that, Mark. Slap Savage now is going to be looking at a violation. Are they going to call it? Looking at a violation, it looked like they were going to call a warning, but I'm not seeing it. Okay, there it is. Stepping warning. 
So now if you're keeping score at home, slap savage, slap savage, pardon me, with one stepping warning and outlaw with a matching stepping warning. A lot of comments on the hair of outlaw, Mark. Would you ever think about maybe rocking that type of a little butterfly braid in the back? I would, I would do that all day, and all the ladies would, would love me. You know it. Yeah, I'm I do know it. Sexiest man in the room. That's true, but I don't know that you have enough uh, hair on the back of your head to do that. I do know you have enough on your back. How well, I, I would do that with my back hair. Actually, we should do that, Mark. That's a nice look for you. Now, of course, for Outlaw, that's a, that's a spiritual thing. He believes all of his power comes from his hair, and he takes great care of it. Tentative uh, stance there, anticipating yeah, that, his slap again. That's an interesting stance. He trains in martial arts for most of his life. He competes at Car Jitsu Championship, One, and he's a cage two, fighter. Three. Oh, and he's just dropped the Slap Savage for the yeah. first time in the Slap Savage career, and the Slap Savage is going to fall down a few times here. Holy smokes! I personally like the way he's trying to get up, but maybe it's not wise, but it's impressive to the judges. Or maybe it's not. That was a tough, tough shot there. Everybody taking a knee. It looks like the cover of their new mixtape. Now the Slap Savage comes to us from Power Slap. Uh, his first match at Power Slap, he lost a decision to John Kennedy, the Slap Daddy, coming up next, actually, on our card. And the Outlaw is a transplant to Slap Fight from Car Jitsu Championship. Yeah. A lot of crossover, yeah. MMA. Slap fight. It, it, it's a beautiful thing. They do go hand in hand. They really do. And and now that we're uh, affiliated and owned by Pro League Network, we have so many niche sports that we have the opportunity to work with. We've got car jitsu. We've got ultimate tire wrestling, foot golf. A lot of these guys are starting to, to try a lot of these extreme combat two, sports, Mark. Three, and in round two, oh my gosh, almost drops Outlaw. Maybe a little neck there. A little bit of neck, yeah. It looks like a club. Yeah. Okay, we now have a warning for clubbing. Slap Savage has one warning for stepping, one warning for clubbing, and one warning from Mark the Hammer Coleman about his dress pants. Okay, it does look like the Slap Savage is fully recovered here. He's a tough, tough guy, and he loves the sport of slapping. He's really hungry for his first win tonight, and with a win over Outlaw, he could really make a good case for himself for a big fight next. A loss to Outlaw would put Outlaw one step closer to that lightweight title. And I have to tell you, we've got a lot of lightweight fighters on this card, all hungry for a shot at Raven, the newly crowned first ever Slap Fight Championship lightweight champion. And uh, as you can see, he's in the corner of Slap Savage now getting a bird's eye view. And here we go with round three. You see, Mark, that's how Slap Savage is bracing himself. He's got his shoulders up just enough. He's got his chin tucked the right amount, just defensive enough to not get called for violation. And here comes a big shot. And he goes down again, only wow. this time it took him 15 minutes uh -oh. to fall down. The leg comes up. Okay, he's going to have a hard time. It looks like they may... He should take his time here. They may let him stand up here. If he's I was the corner man, I would tell him to take his time. There you go. Okay, Breathe. there you go. There's his Breathing experience. Breathing so showing. important. Okay, now it looks like lead official Kyron Bowen is explaining to the corner that there was a stepping violation on that round. And if that's the case, that, that strike cannot end the fight. At best, it will be a no contest. So Slap Savage has a decision to make. Either he stands up now, Mark, and has two slaps in a row, or he stays down and takes the no contest. And let's see what happens. How much time has he got to get up there, JT? Well, now that it's been deemed uh, an illegal strike, he's going to have his 60 seconds plus an additional 60 seconds, which is what Kyron Bowen is explaining to him now. And once again, Kyron Bowen, sponsored by Sangamon Watches, taking every opportunity to look at his watch on camera. It's a beautiful watch. Now, this is the thing that I really enjoy about slap fighting, Mark, is, you know, 
this is a very controversial sport. A lot of folks hate the sport. A lot of folks love the sport. But the one thing that you have to agree on is that these guys are tough and they're down to compete. They may not do hours and hours of cardio in the gym each week, and, and they may not train in a, a professional facility, but these guys want to compete, and when the chips are down, they continually step back to the barrel to prove themselves. Toughness is not a question in this sport, this great sport. You know, you have to ask yourself, how long will Outlaw stand there before Slap Savage taps, and there it is. That's going to be a win by TKO for Outlaw. Mm. Outlaw has just spread his win streak to two with two big victories. And I'm telling you, that probably puts Outlaw at the lead in the lightweight division title Ladies pursuit. Ladies and gentlemen, we could not continue the match. So this is ruled a no contest because the last blow was a stepping violation. So we have a no contest. Let's hear it for both competitors. Let's take a look at a new project currently in development at the PLN Lab. Introducing Ultimate Tire Wrestling. Competitors use judo and American freestyle wrestling in this new combat sport where grapplers can win a decision by gaining control points or a finish by stuffing your opponent in the hole. The match ends when over 50% of your opponent is inside the tire. No striking, no submissions, and nowhere to hide. It's Ultimate Tire Wrestling, coming in 2024 to Pro League Network. Once a popular middleweight at Power Slap, Slap Daddy has made the switch to the underground slap scene. After making the astonishing cut from middleweight to lightweight, Slap Daddy comes to Slap Fight for redemption. With over 50 mixed martial arts bouts to his credit, his resilience is not in question. It is yet to be determined, however, if he will successfully transition from three round fights to 10 rounders. Tennessee slapper the Cannon returns to the barrel after an extended hiatus following his loss to Raven at Nemesis in July. The popular lightweight was the front runner for the inaugural lightweight championship, but after falling short, he has new motivation and hopes to make a statement with a victory over Slap Daddy tonight.
next one's a big fight. We're gonna bring him out here first, fighting out of Mason City, Iowa. He weighed in at 173 and a half pounds. He is actually Slap Daddy! All right, his opponent, fighting out of Sevierville, Tennessee. He weighed in at 171. Please give it up for the cannon! All right, Mark the Hammer Coleman here with JT Tilly, and we are so excited for this feature fight. It's Slap Daddy versus the Cannon. Slap Daddy on your left with Frank the Tank in his corner, the Cannon on your right. And Mark, I have to tell you, I'm very, very excited about this fight. We've got a lightweight versus a middleweight. Now, Slap Daddy has cut a tremendous amount of weight for this fight. Very impressive, and we're very happy to have him here uh, previously with Power Slap, but John's always been a good friend of the family here, and we're just really honored to have him with us here now in the Slap Fight Championship family. The Cannon's been a family member for a long time. Both of these guys are powerhouses within the sport, and uh, may the best man win tonight. Again here with Slap Daddy, taking it very, very serious. The hard, hard cut, gruesome cut. I love to see it. The MMA crossover uh, with the weight cut and all that, but... Uh, the cannon have been around forever. This is this is gonna be a beautiful matchup right here. Heads it is! All right, and it looks like uh, looks like the cannon has won the coin toss. He's gonna slap first. Again, slap daddy cutting from over 200 pounds down to 173.5. He's got a new fight camp with a great coach, working exclusively on slapping, and of course. Uh, the cannon uh, walking around at about 165. He's come up 10 pounds for this fight, and it's David versus Goliath, but don't get it twisted. This is a very competitive fight. One, two, three. Ow, a big shot, and John eats it. Slap Daddy stays at the barrel. Fantastic chin. Solid, clean slap. Way to go, John. Now Cannon has an opportunity here to eat a slap from Slap Daddy. He better be ready. Yeah, this is right a big, here, big lightweight. John has almost proven the impossible by reaching lightweight. He is without a doubt the largest lightweight at Slap Fight Championship. Here we go. Oh, no, we've got a club here. Big club, and he took it. Yeah, Cannon, 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 Cannon Club, I have to say, both of these guys, you know, they got a lot of pressure. They come from two different circles, but they both have they have uh, respect for each other. And uh, honestly, that's just the way we prefer it here. The Slap Daddy with an accidental club, no one's going to get that twisted. He's a clean fighter, and we're just going to go ahead and give the Cannon a few seconds here to recover. You know, I love the weight cuts, uh, Mark. I really do. I, I see a lot of these guys... Uh, just kind of fighting at their walk around weight because this is slapping and, and some of these guys don't want to do the hard cardio but anytime you see a guy like slap daddy who's who's willing to take a 30 or 40 pound cut uh, what a tremendous advantage it gives you on fight night it's going to be a thing of thing of the past if you want to be the best you, you're going to have to cut weight it's that simple very hard but simple you, you size matters Round two. Oh, that was a solid shot. And again, Slap Daddy eats it. These guys have earned each other's respect already. Getting the crowd into it. I like it. Folks, if you haven't already, please go to Brinks.tv. Take a look at our broadcast partners at Brinks. In fact, you can watch this broadcast now at Brinks.tv, and you can bet for free. That's B-R-I-N-X dot TV. Check it out. Slap Daddy taking a look at uh, Kyron Bowen's Sangamon watch. Kyron Bowen must be getting paid by the mention. It's nice to see Kennedy here, John Kennedy, the slap daddy here in the underground location. 
A lot of slap, uh, a lot of slap pioneers in this room. We've got Wolverine, Darius the Destroyer. We've got a lot of great guys here. Some of the guys from the uh, the other league. We've got see, we've got Devin Schwan and and Wesley Drain. It's just a big slap family here at the undisclosed location, and a big big party, and we're clapping cheeks. One, two, three. Oh, and it's a big shot to the eye. I don't know if that's worth calling a penalty, but it was a little bit high. Here at Slap Fight Championship, the heel of the hand can make contact with the face, but it cannot extend any deeper than the tip of the chin. So sometimes a shot may land a little high or a little low. That doesn't necessarily constitute a clubbing violation. The clubbing violation is based on how deep the heel of the hand goes. And of course, that was a clean slap by Prop. John Kennedy's hype. He's been waiting for a long time. The slap daddy has something to prove. He had some tough luck in a previous situation and uh, couldn't wait to return to competition. We've been talking to slap daddy for a long, long time, and I'm so happy that he's finally joined us here at Slap Fight Championship. Round three of 10 rounds scheduled. These guys have earned each other's respect for sure. Oh, a nice shot. John felt that one, but he did stay right in the pocket. Big windup, beautiful follow through. The fan, a perfectionist. The whole family lives and dies with the sport. That's true. That's true. We were in Myrtle Beach, Mark. Uh, Pro League Network was producing the World Putting League, and uh, we were in uh, Myrtle. Excuse me, no, we were in Tennessee, and the entire family showed up. We had. Uh, the cannon and his wife and his brothers and his father and and at a certain point his father pulled me to the side and said look the next time you need a, a 205 or he said I'd, I'd love to compete and so uh, we've got an entire family full of slappers here including the father and I have a feeling you'll probably see the elder cannon slapping sometime on a, on the challenger series in one of the next few seasons I was trying to listen in there uh, I couldn't hear because I was running my mouth there, but uh, uh, Slap Daddy's a funny guy. He's having some good banner with his opponent, and uh, it, it looks to me like these guys are not going to take any breaks. They're just going to go ahead and pinch it off right here. One, two, three. Oh, a big, big shot, but very, very high. Oh, they're going to go ahead and call that. You know, right away. That's too bad. Very obvious. It's going to be a clubbing violation on Slap Daddy. And that's going to be the loss of a turn. And for Cannon, that's probably what he's been hoping for during the match. Big opening for Cannon here. Let's see if he takes advantage of it. Mark, do you feel like Cannon messing with his hair like that? It almost feels like he's aiming that at the camera. It's almost personal toward you. Gosh, I remember when you had, you had such a beautiful head of hair, Mark. All the ladies loved my yeah, hair. Yeah, they did. Yes, what, did you just was, give it to them? Uh, yeah, oh. like like usually every time. Yeah. It feels like as you get older, you know, you, you wish for things like you know, my hair. I never, I took it for granted, man. But then whenever you and I started hanging out, I felt so much better about my situation. <laughs> okay, so we're taking a, a little bit of a break here. I'm not sure what's happening, but uh, ju judging from the conversation in the corner here with Frank the Tank and uh, Slap Daddy... Uh, it's probably just, hey, let's get some camera time, get my sponsors on camera here. All right, here's that second slap in a row here. This is round four for the cannon. One, two, Incoming. Yes, sir. Okay, nice little slap. I like how the slap daddy kind of smiles. Let's go. Let's go. Impressing the judges. That's right. He's a good showman, but he's also, the slap daddy has about 45 professional MMA fights. So he knows the game inside and out, and he knows that he's a little bit behind due to those violations. Two, three. Oh my God! And the cannon gets one, and Slap Daddy is back to his feet. He's already recovered. Holy smokes! The cannon dug deep on that one. I love that. There's a little bit beautiful. of a premature celebration here. That's a good knockdown. But let's also keep yep. in mind that the Slap Daddy immediately sprang back up to his feet and he's already recovered. Now we're in a situation here where the cannon 
has got the edge with the one lost turn and the one violation, and now he's got a knockdown, but we are only five rounds deep in a 10 round fight. So the celebrations may be a little bit premature. Now surrounding, surrounding Slap Daddy, we've got uh, Amir Nuruddin, we've got Devin Schwan, Wesley Drain, uh, a lot of Power Slap guys over there in the corner. And of course, Frank the Tank, formerly of Power Slap, he's now back at Slap Fight. You always had a problem with premature, right? Yeah, I always do, man. I, I, I just I seem to surround myself with people that have that premature issue. Late night. <laughs> Inappropriate, Mark. Slap Daddy returning fire, bottom around five. Oh, and he's affected there. That's a little bit less power. He pulled up a little bit on that one. You know, John's a gamer. I, I'm not so sure that he didn't pull up on his power just because he's rocked some, somewhat. That does not mean that this fight is over. There's anything can happen. Slap Daddy is a gamer. And the cannon smells blood in the water. Oh, John takes it. Smiles. Fantastic fight. Yeah, this is a fantastic fight between two great, respectful fighters. I'm looking down here at the judges' uh, tallies, and I see that we have no penalties for the cannon so far. We've got two clubbing violations for Slap Daddy, one lost turn, and we've got a knockdown for the cannon in round five. That knockdown's big. I, I would put him definitely ahead on the judges' card. Yeah, I, I think we're in a situation here where Slap Daddy's starting to do the math in his head, and he's going to start throwing some bombs here to try to level up. The Cannon fell short in his last fight against Raven. He worked very hard to get the lightweight title fight, and he lost it by a decision. It was heartbreaking. Uh, this is his opportunity to climb back to a title shot, but there are a lot of lightweights in line, including Slap Daddy. Okay, that was a nice shot. Good technique. Fantastic. Slap Daddy's been training with the Mason City Fight Team. It's a mixed martial arts and martial arts team that has recently been uh, working with Slap Daddy on his slap technique. And, and honestly, Mark, we're seven rounds deep. Uh, Kennedy's had a career uh, previously in slapping, and I think in this one match, he is about to surpass the amount of total rounds that he's fought in his career just in this match. He's seven swings deep. He's only had one violation and one warning. Not bad for, for Slap Daddy. A uh, little bit of a different rule structure here, so it's going to be some growing pains. But uh, nothing too horrible here. He looks like he's okay. I don't, I don't see any signs of visible damage on, on Slap Daddy. On you, Mark, I see a lot of visual damage. I was going to talk to you about that. As you're getting older, you're starting to look like an older black woman. What's going on with that? Well, I am black. Is that what happened? Yeah, my mom's black. That's good to know, man. That's when I met her, it didn't seem the case. All right, here we are, round seven. One, two, three. Oh, my gosh. Stay in there, John. All right, good shot. No one can say that the slap daddy does not have a chin. He says, I'm eating these. Definitely has a chin, and that knockdown doesn't seem to have affected him as far as his stability. Uh, well, we're going to see if there's anything more that Canny can do to put an exclamation point on his victory tonight. If you were Slap Daddy, Mark, what, what would you be thinking now? Well, I would uh, think I'm a little bit behind on the cards. And uh, has to be accurate, but at some point uh, he's got to turn it up and, and, and try to put the put, put, um the cannon down so we need a big slap right here so I, I will be digging deep you know I wouldn't be surprised if slap daddy had the power to put the cannon on his ass but we've not seen it before he might still be a little shooken up all right here we go we are in round seven here's your wind up slap daddy Good shot, nice and clean. Didn't have a lot of power. I love the respect, for, Mark. I, just for being the bigger man, I'm just, um, so far, I'm just missing the power from Slap Daddy. 
you know, that knockdown effect in him. He, he's a gamer. You know, he's not going to show us mm -hmm. any sign of where he knows the judges are watching. Uh, but that knockdown did affect him, uh, even though he did pop up quickly. Great guy, Slap Daddy. Good guy. I don't know what's happening here. I fixed that hair. Oh, I, it seems the cannon has borrowed a hair tie from a pretty lady. I can't wait to remind him that that happened on camera. <laughs> Those of you watching at home, we've always wondered, what do the fans think? What is your opinion of the cannon's hair? Should we do a man bun, pigtails, braids, French braids? Uh, let's, let's take a poll. Let us know on social media, guys, and we'll try to get it done for you. My vote is bun. One, two, Round eight. Three. Oh, a good shot. Slap Daddy almost went down. He got his bearings. I love watching this guy slap Mark. Even though he, he may not be winning the match, he's just a blast to watch. What a battle we got here, JT. This is... Uh... What round we in here? Uh, we're in eight. round eight. Two rounds left. Let's see if it goes the distance. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. He's still on his feet. He's gonna have a really tough time eating tonight. Yeah. Take it to the straw. What a great fight! This is a real fantastic competition. Good solid matchup. That's what we're about here at Slap Fight Championship. Everybody needs to step to the barrel with an equal opportunity to win. And as you can see here, these are two very evenly yoked competitors. I think Slap Daddy's starting to milk these breaks here. How bad does he want it? Let's go. Slap Daddy, how bad do you want it? You got to turn it up right here. You're behind. Definitely look at behind. The, look at the intensity on the face. Of slap Daddy John Kennedy. Yeah. He's coming in here hot. Okay, nice solid shot. He's racking up points here, but there's not a lot of power. Okay, no violation, but I think what's happening here is lead official Kyron Bowen is telling the cannon to watch the shoulder shrugs. You can't roll your shoulders forward to the point where they block the shot. And uh, if that happens, you'll get uh, you get a flinching call. So you've got to be very, very careful here. The wisdom in the cannon there m forces the ref to tell them bring it back. I would make the ref talk to me the whole fight. <laughs> now you see John, he's got his, uh, his chin just right over the barrel enough to be defensive. And that's how he's eating those shots. Good technique. Good technique. Getting We're in stronger. round nine. Is it too late, JT? I don't think so. I, you know, I think the cannon is the clear winner if the fight were to end now. But we're talking about a guy that cut down from 200 pounds to make lightweight. Hopefully, at, maybe he's saving it for this last. Maybe minute. so. He could pull the trigger. He he actually did mention to me at one point that he loved the idea of having a 10 round fight. Uh, but I, I have to tell you, I know this guy. He's really a great guy, and he's a great competitor. And uh, I would imagine that in his mind right now, his focus is, how do I win this? He's got a big support section here. You know, we do these uh, shows in an undisclosed location, so uh, you've got to have some connections to find a way in here. And I tell you, John wore us out. He had so many fans come in with him that, uh, you know, it's like a family reunion back there. And our good friend, Wesley Drain, Devin Schwan. Uh, and, of course, Amir is here. It's nice to see all these guys in the audience. However, uh, these guys cannot help John Kennedy win this fight. He's got to dig deep right now. Another clean shot. Not a lot of power. You know, I don't think it would, it would take a lot to win the fight if John perhaps maybe would, would get a knockdown. Uh, and the cannon would have one violation. But if that doesn't happen, this fight is going to go to the cannon. And uh, that's going to be a, a nice win for the cannon. One of the bigger wins of his career. But John looks good, Mark. One, two, three. Oh, solid. John's eating these shots. He's really, uh, you know, he's really improved since the first time we saw him. He's got a lot of pizzazz, he's got a lot of integrity, but uh, this guy has been specifically working on his slap technique alone, and I have to say I'm really impressed to see him. He hasn't had a, a, a stepping violation, not one. He's not had a flinch violation, and aside from the two clubbing violations, 
uh, this guy came in and fought one of the cleanest fights that I would have expected. Now, it is going to be his slap. I believe this is his final slap. So right now, in his mind, he's trying to figure out the best way to put the cannon down for good. If he doesn't, in my mind, it's over. What do you think, Mark? Frank needs to be in his ear right now telling him just that, JT. It's, it's time to bring out the big one, the big fucking slap. He's goops. Yeah, man, that, that kind of slap's not allowed here. But a big slap would be allowed. Lots of respect. I love it. I absolutely love it. These guys didn't talk any trash. A lot of people around them were putting pressure on them, and they stayed gentlemen all the way to the end. Last shot. And he's not going to get it done. Here we are at the end of the fight here, and uh, it, it looks like this fight's going to go to the cannon. Let's listen in. Uh, to the judge's decision. All right, friends, let's give it up for both warriors. That was quite the battle. Good job, guys. We do have to have one winner, and we do have one winner, and that is the cannon. Man, that was a that was a great fight. I got this for you, brother. Well deserved. <laughs> That's right. All right. So uh, I mean, that was a, a huge win right there. Obviously, he's awesome. Uh, you're awesome. So what do you got next? I know you got some big plans, right? Getting a rematch for that lightweight belt. Rematch for the lightweight belt. He's calling out somebody. Who are you calling out? Raven. So we had a we had a slap fight that was close, and you lost that one. And he still got the belt, and you're one. Now I don't have any control on whether that happens or not, but I know that the, the the people that do have that control are listening right now. So if you have anything to make your case, go ahead. Uh, I'm the best lightweight there is. So let's get it. Best versus the best. We'll see. Let's do it. The cannon. Yeah. The cannon. Let's hear it for him. Do you want to do a shout out to somebody? Uh, I want to shout out to Moist Critical, my dog Ganger, and then I want to shout out uh, my brother Chris and his wife Kayla. Right on, man. Well, thank you, brother. Good job. Congratulations.
forget to stick around after the main event for a sneak peek at the Car Jitsu Championship Single Night Double Elimination Tournament. Ten grapplers battle for the title, but only one will leave the vehicle as champion. The first quarterfinal follows tonight's main event. Stick around. Team Rocky protege, the Slim Reaper, developed quite a following as a knockout artist over the past two seasons at Slap Fight. With big wins over Shimokan Thunderclap, Biscuit, and Demon, Slim became the front runner for the Light Heavyweight Championship, but suffered a broken hand in the semifinal of the Light Heavyweight Tournament earlier this year. After recovering, he entered the three-man barrel match at Nemesis and eliminated Monkey Wrench, then battled champion Okuma915 for nine rounds before losing by decision. The Reaper jumped at the opportunity to run it back with Okuma and is determined to be the first blemish on his 8-0 record. El Paso-based slapper Okuma915 signed with Slap Fight in 2022 and promptly made a name for himself with dominant victories over the Mexicutioner, Biscuit, Black Jesus, and Shimokan Thunderclap. He became champion after winning the 2023 Slap Fight Invitational, but vacated the title before entering the three-man barrel match at Nemesis. He won the title back with a TKO of Monkey Wrench and a decision over Slim Reaper. Now 8-0, Okuma915 hopes to put the Slim Reaper away in less than 10 rounds to maintain the title. Light heavyweight title. Let's bring out the challenger. He's fighting out of Harrison, Arkansas. Weighing at 185 pounds. He is Slim Reaper. His opponent, weighing at 200 pounds, fighting out of El Paso, Texas. He is the current champion. Okuma, nine, one, five! Boiling point, it's the Slim Reaper and Okuma 915 for the light heavyweight championship. And I have to tell you, I'm excited to see this fight again. We saw a glimpse of this fight at the end of the three-man barrel match back at Slap Fight Nemesis, but that fight was tainted with a couple of bad calls. And of course, there was an entirely different competitor in the third man spot. So tonight we see 10 rounds between the two highest ranked light heavyweights in the United States. And of course, Team Okuma and Team Rocky going head to head at the barrel. Love joining me fight. joining me tonight in the booth is world champion UFC Hall of Famer Mark the Hammer Coleman and Mark who do you have in this fight I love a rematch um, I was in I've been known with Kuma since the beginning um, gonna be a tough one uh, he came in a little light I'm big on size matters um, Slim Rippers as tough as they get but uh, I guess I'm gonna go with uh, Kuma all right, Okuma is the favorite tonight. For those of you betting, uh, if you're not betting, you can go now to Brinks.tv. That's B-R-I-N-X.tv, and you can bet for free. 
Here we are in round one of a 10 round schedule fight for the glory. And the champion has the first shot. Here's the wind up. One, two, three. Oh, a big shot and the slippery eats it. Here we go. Wow. These guys is as intense as it gets, JT. Yeah, I have to tell you, I've seen the Slim Reaper in some crazy situations. I've heard some stories that are even crazier that I can't repeat. But I've watched the Slim Reaper break his hand in a tournament and then continue the tournament with his broken hand. I've also seen Slim Reaper take some big, big shots. And when he can't see out of his eye, continue to throw bombs. Okuma, on the other hand, I've watched him win eight fights in a row. We got him from a small little barroom league in Texas. Uh, we turned him professional here at Slap Fight. And uh, he's yet to be knocked down. He's yet to be defeated. And right now, he's ranked number two by the World Slap Fighting Alliance, pound for pound. Second to Wolverine. One, two, three. Good job. Oh, a big shot from Slim Reaper. And Okuma says, no, 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 come back here. I don't need a break. Slim feels he won the first fight. Yeah, he does. I, I had a long conversation with him. He's very upset. I've not seen that before. He was talking about that foul through to me. It's hard to do without following. Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting technique that he's developing, and I love it. Instead of following three fouls through and down. Oh, that's a solid slap from Slim. Both these guys' technique is beautiful. The Slim Reaper is bound to determine to win this fight. I can tell you that he will go all 10 rounds if he has to, but he wants to win the match by knockout. Oh, he staggers Slim. Slim remains in the zone. Judges keeping a close eye on that stagger. It looks like we've had a stepping violation. And they're going to call that stepping warning. That's just a warning, it seems. But if that happens again during the match, Okuma will lose a turn. And that's not, that's not something that we've seen a lot from with Okuma 915. Now, in the corner of Slim Reaper is his mentor, Rocky Moore. <coughs> Rocky Moore's been involved with Slap Fight Championship since our second event back in 2017. Rocky faced Wolverine. Wolverine's also in the house tonight. Wolverine and Okuma uh, becoming teammates uh, at the new BFC Extreme. It's a new slap team that features uh, a lot of your favorite slappers all in one house. And we'll go back into that more later. Darius the Destroyer, Wolverine, Black Larry, Raven. There's many, many more coming. And it looks like Okuma 915 is the newest One, on the One, two, three. Okay, that was a little bit of a good movement. That you see, what happens here with Okuma is he sometimes times his movement to the slap. If you if you get caught doing that a little bit too early, you could be called with a flinch. Uh, but if it is a viable technique, and it will keep you safe in the early rounds of the fight, and it looks like that's what he's doing. I, I personally would have maybe called a, a warning on that one. But uh, it looks like lead official Kyron Bowen is going to let it set. Now you can see Slim Reaper sticking his hands underneath his chin. He's just maintaining that he can get his hand between his chin and his chest. That's the mandate. Oh my gosh, and the Slim Reaper is rocked. Huge. Work lap. There's a lot of power with Okuma. He, he doesn't have a lot of knockdowns. He, he's got about two, three knockouts in his eight wins. But, uh, you know, that one right there was almost a knockdown. And uh, it kind of looks like when I slap you, Mark, the way you kind of dance around, almost fall down every time. What's happening here? Okay, looks like we might have a tooth issue here. Something's going on inside the mouth of Slim Reaper. And I will tell you now, uh, since no one can hear me, uh, Slim Reaper hit me up earlier this afternoon to tell me that he was suffering from a toothache. So let's just let everybody at home realize this is a man with a toothache taking slaps from the champion. And right now he's probably just getting in the zone to step back to the barrel. I will think that Slim Reaper will not quit during this competition. Slim Reaper from Harrison, Arkansas, Mark. Okuma 915 from El Paso, Texas. 
And again, Kyron Bowen checking, checking his Sagamon watch. One, two, three. Oh, oh it's Slippery oh, Bird does it! Oh, oh, Kuma 915 is on his ass! Wow! Slim Reaper takes a knee. Now we find out what Okuma is made of. Slim Reaper, if you notice him looking at the camera, he's signaling to his daughter. There he is. All of Slim's fights are for his daughter. Now Slim has done the impossible, Mark. No one has ever knocked down Okuma. We'll see what he can do after getting knocked down. It's a wake-up call, but uh, he needs to be awake right now, and he needs to return a big shot back. That's the best. That's what you can do best is just fire back harder. This is a whole side of Okuma. We've you ever fire experience. back harder? You know, I used to back in the day, but I just turned 50 a few yeah. days ago, Mark, and I don't know. Those days may be over for me. Yeah, they're over. I fire back a lot girthier though go, nowadays. I know you got this, buddy. Okuma's back to the barrel, friends. Let's go, fellas. And he's ready. We're in round five. We're halfway through a ten round fight. Come on, Mike. Let's go. Yeah. Slim's gonna check his technique. Rocky's been working with the Slim Reaper for about a year now, and he's really One, recreated his slapping style. Two, three, oh, and the Slim Reaper ah! staggered too, but he eats it. Confidence builder. Confidence is big in this sport. Absolutely. It Every is. sport. And, and you can see right now that Okuma is in the zone. There's a little bit of panic setting in here. He knows that he's vulnerable. And Slim cannot, he, he cannot show this vulnerability because if it goes to the judge's decision, they'll take that into account. Absolutely. Yes, you're correct. Slim's on fire. This is a guy that had a toothache two rounds ago. Now he's on fire. His adrenaline's pumping. You can see the body language. Look at his eyes, Mark. Changed. Yeah, absolutely. He knows that he's got this one in the bag if he can land one more bomb. Slim Reaper's ambidextrous. He didn't tell anyone which hand he was going to slap with until today. Big advantage. Big advantage, indeed. One, Here's your windup. Round five. Two, three. And and Slim knocks him down. Good catch Kyron Bowen applies a rear naked choke. Okuma's in trouble here. I was definitely concerned about the corner guys. I would have been on that catch, JT. I'm the best catcher ever. You know what, Mark? I agree. Why don't you go out there and stand behind Okuma? Man? I would love to go out there right now and get in his fucking ear. He can dig deep and he can come back and win this fucker. Oops. Yeah, he could actually, but we're we're at six rounds deep, and there's been two knockdowns here. Slim Reaper only needs one more knockdown mm -hmm. to win by TKO. Lead the cornerman has to tell him he cannot go down. Oh, you he can cannot, see. The cornerman cannot touch him. This time, you got to let the guy fall. Yeah, that's true. This time, it's got to go down. Okay, I can see that the medical team is starting to surround the platform here, and they're taking a good, hard look at Okuma. It seems okay to me. Yeah, I don't want to see them pull the plug on this fight. He looks like he's okay. Let's let him let's let him take another shot here. And here it comes. Oh, pardon me. This is like this is his shot. Look at Slim committing to that technique. Rocky Moore's really put him in a new place. You can see where he's got his feet splayed. One, he's standing on the outside edges two, of his feet. Three. And he eats another hard yeah. shot, but this is a guy with a fierce chin, Mark. Big. Respect for each other on that one. Absolutely. Look at this. This could be the turning of the tide in the light heavyweight division. We are six rounds deep, bottom of the sixth. It's the bottom of the sixth. Let's go, Okuma. Get that game face back. Oh, my goodness. We're looking here at Slim Reaper potentially knocking his opponent down a third time and taking home the belt in six rounds. Is he a And there's your winner. Oh, Holy smokes. Good Ladies catch. and gentlemen, the Slim Reaper is the new Slap Fight Championship light heavyweight champion. And I cannot believe he did it with three knockdowns in a row of Okuma 915. Holy smokes, Mark. What do you think about that? It's impressive. Uh, Slim Reaper said he was going to do it. He did it. 
He did it with beautiful fashion. He, he, I love the way he takes one. His stance on the defense is perfect, and defense leads to offense. And I think maybe the, 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 the lightness of Okuma had a lot to do with it. I'm always about size matters. And uh, here we have him on the ground, a little bit light in the pants. Yeah, I, I understand uh, what you mean when you say light in the pants, Mark. We've been hanging out a long time together, and uh, it seems to me like you use a lot of euphemisms from personal experience. And I appreciate that about you, Mark. You know, earlier tonight, uh, I asked you for your picks, and uh, you nailed every single one of the fights except for this one, Mark. Okuma well, was your guy. Now, what do you think happens? What's next for Okuma 915? Oh, he needs, uh, he, he's working real hard roofing, and that's, that's the problem here. He, he's getting in great shape, but maybe he goes down a weight class. Uh, size is going to matter. Slim Reaper, same way. He, he's light in the pants as well sometimes, but... Uh, Okuma needs to go back, get in that weight room, get strong. This is this is a sport. Take it seriously. You gotta earn pay. But you knock people out, you get paid. That's right. That's it's that simple. Okuma's a great guy, he's a great competitor. But I want to tell you right now, he might not be able to stand up. He still looks like he might have the jelly legs. And we're looking at the changing of the tide. I'm so happy for Slim Reaper. Both of these guys are great. But one of these guys, the non-winner, probably needs to drop down to the middleweight division and uh, see what kind of opportunity they can find there. Or get the winner and get paid and let's have a, let's have a third one to, 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 to find out who the champ really is. Okay, I, that's not a bad idea, actually. Let's see, uh, let's see here what's going on here on the platform. Okuma seems to be having some sort of a... a uh, All right, we do have a winner. It was okay, a knockout. The, the new the champion, here. Slim Reaper! Here you go, brother. Very well. Very well earned. That was a battle. You took some, but you sure gave some out too. Uh, was there was there anybody you wanted to give a shout out to? Yes, uh, mainly to my daughter, Trinity Francis Davis. I love you. You're my higher power, and uh, this wouldn't be possible without you. And right on. I, I heard early on when things were a little rocky that you said, "This is for my daughter. I'm doing this for my daughter." That was giving you strength. Yes, sir. Right on, man. Right on. So where do you go from here? Uh, training, man. Uh, anybody wants that weight class, come catch it. I ain't even messed up. And just so middleweight knows, I'm coming for that belt. Regardless, I'm coming for that belt. Ooh, he wants two belts. He's greedy. So you, you're going to try to keep this one and go for the, the lower? You're going to cut some weight? Uh, I'm going to stay I'm gonna stay as close as I can in between both weights. So that way I don't disappoint anybody. Right on, man. We didn't disappoint anybody tonight. All right. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. yeah one more. He wants one more shout out, guys. I want to give a special shout out to a friend's mother of mine. She's doing two years of sobriety. She's celebrating it today. Mad shout out to you, Stacy. You're amazing. Woohoo! Yeah. Right on, yeah. Congratulations, yeah. Slim Reaper!
fans, there you have it. What an unbelievable night of slap fighting here in Branson, Missouri, the city where it all started, the birthplace of American slapping. My name is JT Tilly, and I've had an incredible time tonight with my cohort and my partner in crime, Mark the Hammer Coleman. But tonight, what I witnessed was some of the most competitive slapping that I've seen in the better part of the last year. What an incredible card tonight. Slap Fight Championship 29, Boiling Point. Congratulations to the Slim Reaper, our new light heavyweight champion. Mark, I have to say, what an incredible night of fighting. If you had to give the award for fight of the night, which of those fights would you choose? Slim Reaper came to play. The main event, he rose to the occasion, and uh, I'm, I'm excited about possibly doing a break that tie right away. Enjoy the night, Slim Reaper. You you came to fight. You, you, I picked wrong, but when I did pick, I was very, very hesitant about this one, JT. That's because true. Slim Reaper is a bad, bad man, and now he sits on top of the slap fight world. That's right. And, folks, for all of us here at Pro League Network, my name is JT Tilly, along with Mark the Hammer Coleman. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more Pro League Network. We'll be looking for you. Say good night, Mark Coleman. Good night, Mark Coleman. Hey everybody, John Brink is here for Brinks TV. Proud to announce that we are the official free-to-play platform for everything PLN. Tonight, you're going to bet Brinks bucks on slap fighting. Make sure you go to brinx.tv and get your bet on right now. Brinks TV, winners, winners, and more winners. Welcome to the Car Jitsu Championship Single Night Tournament. Tonight, 10 grapplers from all styles will compete in a single night double elimination jiu-jitsu tournament inside of a 2005 Toyota Scion. These competitors are prepared to lay it all on the line using every inch of the car and all of its accoutrements. The winner of this tournament becomes the first ever Car Jitsu Championship Intermediate Champion. Taking a look at the bracket, you'll see that we have eight competitors and two alternates. This is a double elimination tournament, which means each competitor must lose two matches to be removed from competition. Now let's take a look at our first quarterfinal matchup. We're taking a look now at Rusty Merrill. Rusty's our first competitor tonight. He's an MMA fighter, a jiu-jitsu practitioner, a slap fighter, and a lifetime martial artist. He goes by the nickname Outlaw, and he loves to test himself. Merrill has decided to throw his hat into the ring tonight at Car Jitsu Championship, and I, for one, cannot wait to see him compete. One of the first opponents in our Car Jitsu tournament tonight, Rusty, tell us a little bit about your, your combat background. Okay, I grew up wrestling. I got in trouble a little bit at a young age. I went to prison. I got out of prison. I jumped into MMA to clean myself up, get myself back in the right mind frame, and I kind of just shot down the road to this point here. Has it been yeah. working for you? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Clean nose, good, good head on your shoulders. Yep. Everything, in fact, speaking of your head, I can you see? Yeah, look at this. That is cool. Now, is there any kind of story behind that? Yes, I, I, I went through a really intense spiritual journey. With, with mushrooms. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyways, the longer your hair is, the, the more, the more, the stronger your energy is. So okay. that's, that's kind of the bleachers you have. Right on. Well, you're going to need that tonight, huh? Absolutely. And what appeals to you specifically about this car jitsu? The close quarters combat. I, I really enjoy the, the intensity of close quarters in the car. Really? Okay, you're kind of an adrenaline junkie, aren't really you? Do, yes. Right on. And, and, and you got some, uh, you got a kid well on the way, is that what you said yes, right there? I have an 11-month-old daughter and a son on the way also. Right on, man. Okay, well, good luck. Thank you. All right, thank you, man. Rusty Merrill. <laughs> His opponent, Zach Moore is an Oklahoma wrestler and an MMA fighter making his debut tonight inside the vehicle at Karjitsu. 
Zach is a powerhouse wrestler with an extensive competition background, and I, for one, am looking forward to this classic matchup between wrestler and martial artist. All right, I am here with the other opponent for the first card jitsu match. This is Zach Moore, and Zach, I would ask you about your background, what, what the base is, but I'm going to guess it's wrestling. Is that correct? Absolutely. You can just tell by looking at it. You look like a wrestler. Long time wrestling, long time jiu-jitsu, long time MMA. And, and you, you went straight through doing no, all that? No, after 16, 17 years of wrestling, I got into a bad car accident, fractured my spine and my sternum. Oh, so I had to take a few years off. And okay. got back into jujitsu and MMA and haven't stopped since. Right on, but but the back's totally okay. Great, as long as I keep my back muscles strong, we're okay. rolling. Okay, well good, no no issues tonight. No issues tonight. Great, so what, what appeals to you about car jitsu? Man, it's dangerous. It's, like my opponent said, it's close quarters. Mm -hmm. It's a real life situation. Right. So much different than, than fighting in a cage or fighting just on a mat. It's a real life situation. So you're not going to get attacked in, in the cage probably or, or with your gi on, right? Yeah. So this is... Okay. <laughs> right on, right on. Any, any strategy you have? Finish my opponent, man. Finish as many people as I can, as fast as I can. That's a good strategy right there. All right, man. Well, good luck. Sir. It's going down right now, the first quarterfinal matchup. So let's go down to the vehicle and our host, Dallin Getling. All right, we are excited to finally get started. We have the first two contestants with me. I've got Zach Moore, Rusty Merrill, and we're going to flip a, a coin to see which one of you gets to choose which uh, place you start in. So, uh, Zach, you call it in the air. Heads. It is tails. So, Rusty, you get your choice. What would you like to do? Uh, I'll take the steering wheel, please. Steering wheel. So you can go ahead and get in the car now, check it out for 30 seconds while I talk with Zach for just a minute. So, Zach, one thing you didn't mention, I found out later, that, that you, your, your coach, your MMA coach, is, is a Brian Foster. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's some serious clout. UFC <laughs> veteran, Brian Foster, right? So tell me, so tell me about him. Brian, Brian's a great guy. That's not what you said earlier. No. <laughs> Hardcore man in... He just gets his point across. He's, he's straightforward, and he'll tell you what to do, and you'll do it. All right. And so, so it's been good working with him, and you absolutely. feel like you've learned, learned a lot? My, my whole career has been with Brian, so absolutely. This one's for Brian. So maybe not, 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 if, not if you lose. <laughs> All right, man. Well, go ahead now. You, you can take about 30 seconds to check that car out, see if there's anything that, that you can use to your advantage, all right? Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Good luck, Zach. Come on over here, Rusty. All right. So, uh, did you see anything in there that you think you might be able to use? A couple, okay. couple things, one or two. Well, he, he's not listening if you want to tell us. I can't tell you. Okay, okay. All right. Well, uh, I guess good luck. Thank you. And uh, we'll talk to you in a little bit. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at the rules of car jitsu. The competitors begin seated with safety belts fastened. When the match starts, they unbuckle and engage using any part of the vehicle to their advantage. Points may be awarded during the match, but have no bearing on the outcome. It takes a submission to win the round at Karjitsu Championship. If the bout is even after two rounds, we go to a third round and possibly sudden death to decide a winner. And here we are in the vehicle and ready to start this first quarterfinal match. Hajime! And this tournament is underway. Right away, both competitors reaching for the other's seat belt. Neither was able to get out of the seat effectively, and so Rusty has grabbed the seat belt shoulder strap and wrapped it around the neck of Zach, who has now escaped. And Zach is into the back seat with Rusty's shoulder strap around his throat. Rusty is in a bad place here. And now the rear naked choke attempt. This is a little bit of a mistake here. The headrest is going to prohibit the choke from sinking. And also now Rusty is in a, a neck crank, which isn't going to be effective with that seat back in the way. Zach Moore cranking on the neck, but just enough space here for Rusty to get out of the driver's seat. And it looks like he's going to try to join Zach in the back seat here. He grabs the front headlock and steps in. Rusty does come from a jiu-jitsu and martial arts background. He is going to try to maintain top control. 
Of course, Zach's going to reach for a leg and try to uh, secure a takedown for top position. There he goes now. At Car Jitsu Championship, each round is three minutes. The round must be won by submission. Any points scored during the round will apply to the seasonal leaderboard, but they will not be relevant to the match itself. You must win the round by submission. Zach Moore has secured the takedown here. He's now in top position. We're halfway through the round, a minute 25 left. And the temperature inside the vehicle is definitely starting to rise. You can see some condensation inside the windows. Nice little struggle in the back seat. No clear winner here. We've got a minute left in round one. If there's no clear winner, we will move to the second round, and the winner of the second round could very well win the match. If there's no clear winner in round two, we will have a third round sudden death if there's no finish in four minutes. And at this point, kind of a lackluster first round here. We're in the back seat. There's a power struggle, but not a lot of attempts here. Zach Moore just kind of meat heading out of the back seat, looking to get back into the front seat. And the center of gravity of Outlaw just a little bit too much for him. We've got 30 seconds left in the first round. Somebody's going to need to pull something off here, or it's just a complete waste of energy and time. 20 seconds remaining. Still even, fighter, still even. Outlaw fiddling with the neck of Zach Moore. Zach with his chin tucked, just kind of waiting out the first round and looking to reset. And it looks like that's what's going to happen here. First round is in the books. And now the competitors will switch seats to start the three-minute second round. Round two. Rusty's out of his seat quickly, right into the lap of Zach. He's going to hold Zach into the driver's seat and try to secure mount. He's also back to that seat belt, wanting to choke Zach Moore with the seat belt. It's going to be easier said than done, but at this point, Zach is in a horrible position. The seat belt is across his throat, and he is almost mounted. Now he's got his arm through, but this is definitely a power struggle for the seat belt. No point scored for Outlaw. If he could get his right knee to touch the seat, he would receive some point scoring for the seasonal leaderboard. But at this point, it looks like he's just trying to finish his opponent. Zach's in a tough spot here. He's not quite in the choke yet, but the seat belt is everywhere, and Zach wants out of that seat. Very, very strong athlete, Zach Moore. Uh, Rusty's got some good leverage on him here. It looks like we're going to come out of the driver's seat now into the passenger seat. Front headlock for Outlaw. Single leg for Zach Moore. Zach looks like he's driving back into the back seat. And then he takes the back of Rusty. Now he's in a bad spot here. Rusty is in deep, deep trouble and a possible rear naked choke finish. And there it is. First quarter final match, winner, Zach Moore.
<laughs> no, that was it, man. You did it. Congratulations. You can only go that last round if, it, if it's even. Okay. But man, that was that was exciting. How do you feel? Bro, hey, that seatbelt around my neck, bro. <laughs> that, I don't know okay. how I feel about that. <laughs> Lose it so we can hear you. So hey, the one thing I wanted to ask you, because I didn't see it clearly. At the beginning, you guys were going the first round. Yep. And then you jumped in the back and grabbed the seat. Was it just the seatbelt that you grabbed? Yeah. And were you setting that up ahead of time? Yeah. So, so t talk me through that a little bit. So my strategy was if I can keep him in his seat and get in the back seat, he's gonna have hell getting somewhere where I'm at if I'm sure. back there first and there's a small area he can get back there. Right. So that means I have exposure to his neck and if he wants to come in, he's not gonna come feet first, leg lock, head first, choke. But you jumped back there and grabbed that seatbelt right away. Yeah. Did you see that? Were you planning that before you yes, jumped sir. back there? Okay. Yes, sir. Well, good. And that was a pretty even. You guys, it's, it's kind of great sportsmanship, by the way. But I loved hearing you guys chat and tell stories. And <laughs> you kind of had similar backgrounds and everything. And, and even in between, you guys, great sportsmanship. So, yes, sir. So any, anything to say about your opponent? Great guy, man. Yeah. Um, you know, I heard his interview. Been to prison. Um, man, I don't know if I thought I'd talk about it or not. Shouldn't have been. Uh -huh. Great guy, great sport. He's clean, awesome guy. Well, let, well let's let's address it since you did, said that. So it, it was for I was there too for for marijuana. He had possession of marijuana. Yeah. And now it would have been a legal thing, right? It's completely legal, yeah. dude. Like in in most states, you know. Okay. It's, yep. Dude's a great guy, man. He's he's something to watch out for. He well, you he might, set you up might a lot get, of things. You so. might get to meet him again because he's not out. Absolutely. It's a two 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 loss, you know, double elimination. So anyway, rest up. You got you got another match coming up, but congratulations. Thanks, sir. Zach Moore.